before we start this video, I would like to say that Jade is nowhere as broken as Dante during the first day of his release. However, this doesn't mean that Jade is not good, and after hours of experimenting on builds for this Warframe, I honestly can say that Jade has the same enjoyment that Dante provides to Warframe. Digital Extreme said that Jade is some sort of an ultimate support Warframe, but after playing her for hours, I think the Warframe is more than just a support, as she has good survivability, damage, and mobility, which most Warframe players would love. I'm also happy that Jade is one of those Warframes that doesn't need the helmet system to be good, as all her abilities have purpose and they work well together, giving not just support to the team, but good damage and survivability if modded right. Basically, her first ability gives you health regeneration, and if it hits the enemies, it will damage them with heat procs. You can have a max of five light judgments active in the field, and each with its own area of effect, but putting light judgment on one spot won't stack the healing or the damage you deal to enemies. It's better to scatter the ability in different areas, and while the healing is good, I normally use her first ability to proc the judgment debuff that will make them 50% more vulnerable to any attacks. Also, enemies with the judgment debuff can be nuked with her fourth ability with the press of its alternate fire. It does deal massive damage to them, especially if they have no defenses. Moving on, Symphony of Mercy gives you the ability to choose from three buffs. You can either get a power strength buff, shield efficiency, or weapon damage increase. The first thing I have tried is to make Jade immortal with the shield gating mechanic. The idea was to take advantage of the shield region and shield regeneration delay boost to somehow have constant shield values for the Warframe. With low shield value from catalyzing shield, I can easily regenerate it, hence allowing me to proc the 1.33 seconds vulnerability of the Warframe. The only problem is that the buff from her second ability is not that great, and if this will get compared to something like Stein Axe, or even an Equinox Knight form with catalyzing shield, then the Jade setup would just falter from these setups. So instead of shield gating, I devised another survivability setup which we will talk later. For now, I also want to share my experience about the power strength buff and the weapon damage buff. In my opinion, the power strength buff is a free cast when you want it, or your team wants that increase in power strength, but playing as Jade has locked me into using the Deathbringer buff which increases the weapon damage, including Jade's exalted weapon while she is in her glory form. The weapon damage increase is just amazing, and it just straight up makes your exalted weapon better. Because of this ability, I decided to go with a high power strength build to get the best damage boost for my exalted weapon. Not to mention that it also gives weapon damage buff to the whole team with an affinity range. Now, Symphony of Mercy is a skill wherein you can select from three different buffs that has their own duration, but one buff can be active at a time. I have expected that it would be something like Titania's Tribute, but I guess having all these buffs for you and your team will make it broken. Then, she got her third ability called Alphonomize. This is also the Subsume ability of Jade, and I have some special combos for you really soon. For now, let's talk about this ability when used by the new Warframe. Jade's third ability allows her to slow enemies down and strip their defenses per second. The higher the power strength, the faster you can strip all the armor and shield of enemies. You can also revive your allies while gazing at them when they are downed, and as I have said, having at least the stretch mod will make this ability more efficient to use in real missions. And finally, let's talk about the Glory on High ultimate that grants Jade flight and access to her exalted weapon. This ability also gives damage reduction to Jade, and this pairs well with the Boral mod set, the Aviator, and the Aerodynamic Aura mod that grants damage reduction while airborne. My build has a 91% damage reduction while using the Glory on High skill, and take note that this damage reduction not only works with health, but also with shields, making the Warframe tanky enough to take on Steel Path and beyond levels. It's also a good option to add adaptation for more survivability, but I prefer not to since other sets setups can increase the survivability of the Warframe. Jade can make use of companions while she is flying around in the air with her ultimate, and you can use this to further improve your survivability. You can use the Volfafla for the Martyr Symbiosis mod. The best would be the Sly version of this Infested Cavat since it also grants the Warframe some evasion buff which is good when paired with the health regen and damage reduction of Jade. Also a very awesome trick is to add Aerial Bond in your companion build as this pair well with Jade, allowing you to decrease the recovery cover of the companion and downstate fast when Jade is killing enemies while in the air. Another good companion would be the Jin Sentinel paired with the Sacrifice mod that revives you when you are down, but this is the least of my favorite because in Steel Path levels, the Sentinel gets destroyed before it can even revive my Warframe. There's also the option to use Shade Prime or the Hures Brow with their invisibility mod. Uh, I don't know if this is a bug currently, but you can actually make Jade invisible for the rest of the mission, as long as there are enemies within 10 meters, and you don't use the primary fire of your exalted weapon. A alternate fire which nukes enemies that are affected with judgment doesn't 
break the invisibility of both Hura's Q-Brow and Shade Prime, and you can use these companions to make Jade invisible almost every time. And finally, there's always the option to go with Aggro Control by having the Durega Sentinel paired with Duplex Bond modded for Radiation and Cold. The crowd control of these elements allows Jade to shed some aggression against enemies, making sure that she doesn't get too much damage that she is not capable of reducing with her mods and abilities. Um, with all the extra survivability setup I showed, you can focus on increasing the power of your exalted weapon with power strength mods. Now, Jade's exalted weapon is also a pistol, and it can also benefit from the critical chance of the orange arc and shards, or even the secondary outburst. However, I strongly suggest that you don't go this route, since her exalted weapon is not like Dante's Grimoire that grants another tier of critical chance when you add secondary outburst in the orange archon shard trick. The base critical chance of the Warframe is not high enough to get to orange or even red crit tiers. So instead of adding a critical chance to the build, I focused on adding a lot of power strength to my build. In fact, I fully maxed out the red tile forged archon shard in my build, increasing the overall power strength of the build, and I even added the blind rage and precision intensify mods for more power strength. The more strength, the better the damage output of glory, and the better the also the damage over time of light judgment to enemies. It also gives faster defense strip while using Alphonomize and with this build it would take about 2 seconds to strip both armor and shield of enemies even in steel path levels. The only problem is energy efficiency so I needed to have Arcane Energize in my build and pair it with the Boreal Hatred mod for more efficiency. Also Archon Vitality is great for Jade since it doesn't just double her heat proc when using Light Judgment but the double heat proc does work also with the Exalted Weapon. And finally Arcane Velocity does work also with the Exalted Weapon of Jade, increasing your fire rate. Now I did go with Viral only for the glory build since it has innate heat and because we are stripping all the defenses of enemies with her third ability this allows both viral and heat to deal more damage to targets that have only health values by the way if you are wondering where the extra 20 percent damage reduction from the boreal mod then it's from equipping a melee type like the lesion that can equip the boreal contempt mod you can get a 95 percent damage reduction by adding the boreal anguish in your build but you will need to choose and sacrifice either range or power strength in your jade build as i have said earlier the only problem with the final jade build Build I have is managing the energy efficiency of the Warframe, and it's reliant on the kill speed of Glory and the energy restore buff of Arcane Energize. If you don't like it, then you can remove Blind Rage for energy conversion. However, if you have Arcane Energize, then I strongly suggest you try out the build and see those numbers from your exalted weapon hitting 500,000 damage to enemies. Jade is pretty straightforward when it comes to her abilities, and she is really fun to play with her ultimate active. So that's all about it. If you find this video informative, then please give the video a like and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to also subscribe to our channel to get the latest content we upload. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you again in our next video. Squad Leader, signing off.